Take your knowledge to the next level with my dental insurance design and management course. You can grab a $75 courtesy just for watching. Click this link and use the code YouTube at checkout. You'll learn plan designs, all about secondary insurance and coordination of benefits, how to read EOBs, and oh yeah, non-covered services too. Running reports and preparing appeals is also covered. There's plenty to learn, and best of all, it's at your pace. The class will make your insurance life easier, I promise. Hi everyone, I wanted to do a recording for you because when I was at the ADOM conference just recently, the American Association of Dental Office Management, I talked a lot in my classes about using AI for appeals and documentation and also all sorts of other ways. And I'm going to go into that a little bit more in future recordings, but I was coming up with some information for a class I'm giving on AI and revenue. And I thought I just would record what my process was, and maybe you can get some ideas from it. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and head into a perplexity, which is the software that I'm using for this. It's a web-based application and it's one of my favorites. Now, let me go ahead and get this up here. Now, there are a couple different AI models that I use. I really like Perplexity. I really like Claude. And I also like basically the ChatGPT, which is pretty much like the old school one right now. Not old school. It's always current. But that's kind of the, the big one that came onto the scene. Well, don't forget about Gemini. Google's Gemini is not so bad either. I really like Claude and Perplexity the most. I feel like I just get a lot more good information in there. If you're a writer, Jasper is really good too. So if you're one of those office managers or dental people, people that likes to write articles and so forth, I would take a look at that. So what I did here, I wanted to give an example of number three, tooth number three, we submitted for a crown buildup and crown and the crown was paid, but the buildup was not. So this is a pretty common thing. I mean, honestly, how many of us have had buildups, every buildup paid, none of us. So buildups are pretty much a hard thing to get covered. And so what I did was I got part of the doctor's chart notes and then I went to the United Healthcare site. And, you know, one thing that I'll say about getting all of these clinical guidelines is that they're pretty easy to find either in your portal or even online. United Healthcare is actually really good about putting a whole bunch of their clinical guidelines out there. So I was able to go and find the actual clinical guideline for $29.50 and I copied and pasted it. So here's what I told Perplexity. And what I did was basically I'm telling. So the concept is if you've never used AI, it's really good for helping you brainstorm things. And, you know, yes, I can write a narrative on my own or an appeal letter on my own, but it takes a lot of time. And sometimes I sound a lot smarter when I utilize, you know, one of these programs. So I went over to Perplexity and I went ahead and I'm putting in the criteria for the crown buildup. And then I'm also going to put in a snippet of my doctor's notes. And so I already generated it. So I just want to kind of roll through this with you. So you can read here, I asked it to please create an appeal for an adverse decision for crown buildup number three. I gave them United Healthcare's criteria for payment. It basically said, Core buildup is indicated for teeth with significant loss of coronal tooth structure due to caries or trauma in which insufficient tooth structure remains to adequately retain an indirect restoration. Okay, so we've seen that and we know that. And I know and you know that a lot of times that's in our clinical notes. It's really obvious on the radiograph, but unfortunately we have to do these things. Then I went and I took a snippet from the doctor's notes. So I said, please include details from the doctor's clinical notes in the appeal letter. And so you can read here that, I'll just read you the notes. Patient presented for tooth number three. It looks like I mistyped that. Patient presented for tooth number three, crown buildup and crown. Existing crown number three was removed due to open distobuccal margin. Patient complained of a bad taste and pain upon flossing and biting. Sounds pretty run of the mill, right? Explorer stuck under restoration and radiograph showed decay at margin. Crown was initially placed over 13 years ago. Crown was removed, revealing recurrent decay. Previous buildup material removed. More than two millimeter of tooth structure was removed from the distal and the distobuccal cusp area. Patient was warned of deep decay and possibility of endo treatment in the future. Now, if you notice, I did not put in all sorts of stuff like blood pressure, how many corpules or anything like that. I just wanted to get to the part of 
that was pertaining to that tooth. If you were to give it all sorts of that extra information, it would find a way to include it all, which makes the appeal long and really makes it wordy. So I'll give you one tip when I do write anything with AI is that there is a tendency to use a lot of big words and to use a lot of descriptive words. And it's a little bit much most of the time. So never give your first shot over as an appeal. Always review it. It's got to be accurate, first of all. You can't send in something that you know doesn't match your notes. So be careful of that. And you also want to make sure that that the other documentation that you're sending in is going to match it as well. So in this case, perplexity isn't going to take a look at my radiograph. It's not that smart. I've tried. It just doesn't know what to do with it. Um, it thinks it's actually like an image and it doesn't really know what to do, like actually like a painting type thing. And so I don't include images. And the one time that I tried to include perio charting, it was a while ago. It didn't know what to do with that too, but I need to try it again. So the other thing that I'll say is that when you send this in, and this is how it is with all of the appeals that we write. I know that office managers, we write really good appeals, but remember it's the doctor's license that's on the line. So make sure that your doctor is the one reading it once it's done and is the one that is okay with signing it and putting his or her name to it. I know we've been doing this a long time. Some of my appeals and narratives were absolutely fantastic, but it was always up to the doctor to make sure I was representing the situation correctly. And if you notice here on the side, what it did, and this is why I like perplexity and Claude too, but really perplexity too for this is that it will actually pull up the resources. So if you wanted to see where they were pulling additional information, then you could see it. In fact, I can see my friend Estella Vargas here. Um, she's a friend of mine. She's a writer for Dr. By Cuspid. She does a lot of coding articles. Fantastic. If you have not read her material, very, very smart. So it was kind of funny to see her, see her face come up here. You could also, if you paid for the pro edition, generate an image from all of this, which I don't think is a good idea to send to the carriers, but maybe Maybe for your own giggles, you may want to do that. What it also does before we get to the letter is it gives you all sorts of additional information so that you can add to it and that way you can make it even stronger. But like I said, you don't want to send over like a book of an appeal. And quite frankly, I really am a big fan of if you are writing an appeal, it really shouldn't be this huge thing because most of the information should have been submitted, you know, as part of the clinical notes for the first go round. Now, here we go. The other thing that I like about it, about perplexity, is that it gives you sources. So not only is it going through the clinical guidelines that I gave, but I also could have sent it to a website and it would have been able to pull that as well. I just copied and pasted it from the United Healthcare site, but I could have just given them the site and put it in there. And in fact, I think I see the United Healthcare logo here. So here you go. It's pretty funny that my friend Estella, her documentation, her article is listed as a source. I think that's pretty cool. And if you see a source that you don't think is a good one, you can always delete it. And so that's a different step. I don't want to get too far into it, but you can teach it what sources you want to go to. And I find that to be very handy for other things. Okay, so let's go on to what they generated. So really nice appeal. Dear United Healthcare Claims Department. Okay, that's nice, whatever. You get in there and it gives you all this stuff, right? So if you wanted to format it. Okay, I am writing to appeal the denial of coverage for the core buildup procedure performed tooth number three. After reviewing the clinical notes and criteria for payment, I believe this procedure meets the requirements for coverage under the patient's plan. Now, I really like this because if I were the consultant reviewer, it shows that the dentist is actually reviewing the benefit guidelines and is making a case for it. So one thing you should know is that the consultant reviewers always are dealing with dentists who are just angry they're not getting paid. And so they tend to say, well, the, your insurance, you're supposed to pay it. But the reality is if the benefits guideline from the carrier and from the employer don't match what you submitted, the benefit isn't going to be payable. I really like that they added this in here. So here's the clinical scenario. And really, they just pretty much restated what I said, and they said it in a nicer way. I mean, if you remember, I said that Explorer stuck, and it just said, basically they restated and it sounds a lot nicer. These findings necessitated the removal of the existing crown. I didn't put that right. So GPT came up with that or perplexity came up with that. Okay. So upon removal of the crown, significant recurrent decay was discovered. Previous buildup material was removed and then more than two millimeters of tooth structure had to be removed 
from the distal and distal buccal cusp area due to extensive decay. This substantial loss of coronal two structure meets the criteria for a core buildup as outlined in your payment policy. So that's a pretty strong statement. And I didn't say anything about coronal two structure. So it knew to, to throw that in there. Here's the justification for core buildup. And what I like is I'm reading this here. So, okay, significant loss of coronal two structure, removal of decay resulted in lot, loss of more than two millimeters. Okay, fine. So it's basically what I said. It's basically giving a bullet point, easy to read list for the consultant reviewer to take a look at. Insufficient remaining tooth structure. That's a real big reason why a crown buildup is indicated. Okay, so then after decay removal, inadequate tooth structure, that's definitely what we wanna put on there. It's not used as a filler or definitive restoration. And the reason why that's important is that that actually includes the criteria for not paying a buildup. And so it's basically saying, in the next sentence here, I love this, the core buildup was necessary to replace lost tooth structure and provide a stable foundation for the new crown, not to correct minor irregularities or serve as a final restoration. And then here, not for intracoronal restoration retention. And that is, again, taken directly from the reasons why it would not be paid. The core buildup procedure essential to restore the tooth to a form that could adequately support and retain a new crown. I didn't put that in there. I would have written it, but I didn't put that in there. Without this buildup, the long-term prognosis of the tooth and new restoration would be compromised. I didn't write that. It's cool, right? I like it. I respectfully request that you reconsider your decision and approve coverage for this medically necessary procedure. Nice. I like that in there. If you require any additional information, please don't hesitate to contact our office. And if you notice um, there was no, I can't believe you didn't pay this and call the office and I'll tell you why it should have been paid and some of the other crazy stuff that I read on appeals. It is to the point. It uses United Healthcare's criteria and um, criteria for payment and against payment in the letter. I like this. Now, I'm hoping you won't have to do this, that everything is there, but we all know that core buildups, for some reason, we have a lot of difficulty with them. So same thing with scaling and root planning. I'll do another video on that in the future. But one thing I wanted to also make sure that you understand here is that this is actually now part of the clinical record. So I know that we write a lot of this stuff. You're going to be writing this in perplexity. You're going to be writing this on your Word document. First thing is that you don't want to put any patient information into perplexity. Don't do that. That just, you know, HIPAA violations, whatever. It's just not good practice. So don't do that. So you can do all of this anonymously. It's just like I did. I never mentioned anybody's name. So when you copy this and it gives you the little button here to copy, you can copy all of that throw it into a Word document and then, you know, format it with your letterhead and all of it. You'll print it and, and send it. Or what I would really love for you to do is take a screenshot of it and send it electronically. Many of the portals will allow you to appeal by just submitting additional documentation into the portal. So you can upload a PDF or upload a Word document. I'm not a fan of uploading a Word document because it can be changed. I would print my Word document into a PDF and then go ahead and submit that. The other side of this is that it needs to be part of the patient's record. So if you're keeping this on your computer, it needs to find its way into the patient record. So make sure that it's part of the document center or wherever you put your information, all your additional smart docs, that kind of thing. Make sure it makes it into the patient record because if anything were to go legal, you would need to be able to supply this. Now, the question I get a lot is, well, I already submitted radiographs. Um, why do I need to submit them again with the appeal? It just seems like I'm doing double work. I know I used to do it too. Oh, I just wanted to tell you too, if you wanted to, you could kind of go a little bit more. It actually gives you some related information and you really could use up a lot of time doing uh, AI with your appeals. But I want to caution you, the pro version is what you want because you're going to run out of it. I alternate between the three, but I do pay for Claude and I like Claude, but I'm always going to be keeping an eye on them because what's really good now in three months could be blown away by a completely different AI engine. Okay. So let me go ahead and stop sharing here and go back to the camera. So the other question that I get is about radiographs. Okay. So 
question is, do I need to send the same radiographs? Well, here's the thing. The radiographs that you sent electronically, okay, so say you went ahead and screenshot through your electronic attachments, you screenshot the radiograph. So one thing that I learned interviewing Dr. Mike Varneve on a previous podcast episode is that a lot of times the dental consultant reviewers are looking at a radiograph and it's really small. So imagine that you send them a screenshot of the FMX. There's only so much they can blow it up, right? So you might have sent a bite wing, you might have sent an FMX, and you're thinking, why do I need to send more? This is your opportunity to take, get that x-ray up as big as you can. If you're using AI like Pearl, that's perfect. That's what I would, I would send the un- enhanced one along with the enhanced one, but I would absolutely blow that up and then take a screenshot or send that as an attachment as big as you can, because that's going to make your case a lot easier. They're going to be able to see that. I am a big fan of now not sending just an FMX or just bite wings. I will send those two, but I will try to give them as big of an image as I can, because I do know that the screen that they're looking at is sometimes pretty small. Um, you know, they might be doing it at home from their kitchen table. They might be doing it in their office and they don't have a huge monitor. So I want to be really considerate of that because them reading the radiograph and being able to really read it is going to make my job easier because they're going to see the necessity for why my dentist did the procedure. So that's just one way that I use AI to help out with writing appeal letters. Like I said, I'll do another one on scaling and root planing in the future. And I suspect I'm going to get questions about extractions and bone grafting. So we'll probably head into that area as well. So I'll leave in the show notes, the resources that I mentioned and do your own research on that because you might prefer, you know, Gemini over perplexity over chat GPT, but it is absolutely up to you. I just hope you get uh, really good results and start getting some payment in on your claims. Hope this helps.